How's it going guys? It is 4.14 a.m. Sunday, May 29th here in Japan, and we have a bit of an unusual question for surgery. Nearly identical one shows up on one of the 2CK Clinical Mastery Series surgery forms. Not my fucking opinion. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L and man underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. Two weeks after undergoing arteriography for peripheral vascular disease, a 58-year-old woman develops a continuous machinery-like murmur and palpable thrill at the angiography site. An arteriogram is shown. You say, no idea what I'm fucking looking at. And then the question asks, which the following is most predictive of the development of an S3 heart sound in this patient? So a patient who's had recent arteriography in conjunction with a machinery-like murmur, palpable thrill, this image, what we're looking at is an AV fistula. Okay, an arteriovenous fistula. Now, some students looking at this question might say, oh, that's so easy, that's so obvious. It's not, okay, it's extremely difficult. 19 out of 20 people looking at this, no idea what we're fucking looking at, all right? So, but even still, if you don't know what this image is, you sort of should just infer that palpable thrill is nonspecific and implies increased blood flow, okay? Across either a lumen slash valve, okay? Like when you have a four on six murmur in the heart, uh, that will be a loud murmur with the stethoscope plus a palpable thrill or heave. We have increased blood flow. Okay, there's turbulence. So that's what that indicates here. You say continuous machinery-like murmur. That's really fucking weird. I thought that was patent ductus arteriosus. I agree. Okay, 29 out of 30 times, it would be patent ductus arteriosus. Not my opinion. It's on the 2 k surgery form. Okay, so this is an AV fistula, iatrogenic. Question wants to know the most. what's most uh, predictive of the S3 heart sound. S3 heart sound in this case would mean high output cardiac failure. You need to know that when blood is leaving the arterial circulation for the venous circulation, you're going to get increased venous return to the heart faster than it should occur normally. So increased preload, you get a high output cardiac failure. S3, if you have normal ejection fraction, it's 55 to 70. So if you have an S3 plus an ejection fraction of 70 or greater, that's your high output cardiac failure. Obviously, long discussion here. S3 plus a decreased ejection fraction, that's going to be systolic dysfunction, left heart dilatation. Uh, obviously, this could be physiologic as well, pregnancy, high endurance athletes. The point is, in this case, we expect a high output cardiac failure with the S3 heart sound. Uh, so we're just going to say, which is most predictive? Let's walk through the answer choices. Choice A, concurrent S4 heart sound, wrong answer. Uh, I just threw this in here for the sake of confusion. I mean, S4 will it reflects a stiffened left ventricle almost always. Yes, it can rarely be right-sided, but when we have an S3 concurrent to an S4, it's nothing specific to this case, okay? It's just a miscellaneous distractor. Long discussion as far as the heart sounds, but I'm going to move forward here. Choice B, contraction of RNA virus, wrong answer, albeit high yield that you should be aware that Coxsackie B virus is an RNA virus that can cause dilated cardiomyopathy. okay? It just doesn't relate to this question. There's no recent infection. Clearly, there was the uh, procedure of the, the, the arteriography performed. Choice C, failure of salicylate therapy, wrong answer. Very lengthy discussion here as far as peripheral vascular disease is concerned. This is almost always a wrong answer, salostazole on USMLA, okay? You should know that when we diagnose arterial disease, peripheral vascular disease, we do ABIs first, ankle brachial indices, super high yield for 2CK, all right? After you do the ABIs, half of questions just want exercise slash walking program as the next best step. The other half of questions might ask something like, you wanna do a stress test prior to the exercise program to determine exercise tolerance first. The point is, all right, you do the exercise slash walking program first. If that fails, you can add salostazole on top of it. Okay, phosphodiesterase inhibitor. I say students always get this wrong slash uh, it's almost always a wrong answer because if you choose this first, bad fucking news for TCK, all right? Super high yield. You're going to get at least like two or three of these questions on the exam about uh, exercise program first. Salostazole, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, presence of pallor with elevation of the limb, wrong answer, just miscellaneous distractor, peripheral artery disease. You say, why not? Could this, why couldn't this be the case? It's fucking wrong. Choice E, size of abnormality is the correct answer. Okay, once again, it's not my opinion. The NBME form asks fairly identical question. Okay, nearly identical image with this description. And then the answer is just size of the abnormality. It's not so difficult to conceptualize or understand. You say, 
okay, well, if you had a larger AV fistula, obviously that would mean you have more blood leaving the arterial circulation and that would increase the risk for a high apocardial failure. Sure, okay. But just overall, this question can strike the student as slightly unusual, uh, especially with this type of answer, okay? So I'm just letting you know that this is a factoid uh, you should be aware of for surgery for 2CK. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.